What is Gucci, everyone? I hope everyone's great. Everyone's having a great September 2nd, if you follow these days, or if you're watching this in the future. Goods to you. You can learn at any time. This is a video I want to make about NS constraints in Swift. NS layout constraints, to be specific. The whole point about constraints in Swift is to be able to use the feature known as auto layout, which means that as your screen size varies, the layout still adapts to the correct proportions of your design. And I'll show this accordingly. Right now, I have a basic Swift project. If you just created a, um, a single file app in Xcode, you would get your viewcontroller.swift file. And that's all I'm editing right now is my viewcontroller.swift file. And now I only have these three lines where I create a view at coordinates 50-50 with a height and width of 100. And then I add the, I make the background color red color, and then I add it to the sub view. So now if I run my app quickly, this always takes so long, I simply get a red square in the upper left corner. But now what, what we want to do is I want to make a green square inside the red square, but I want the green square to be half the height of the red square, no matter what the height of the red square is. So it will vary. It will auto resize. And that's why we're going to use auto layout. So it automatically lays out our things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a view two. I'm going to call it v2. And we're just going to call it a UI view. We're not going to give it a frame because we won't need to because auto layout will take care of this frame for us. We're going to set the background color of this UI view. We're going to set it to green. Get some Christmas colors going. And then we also need to do something that's very important. And we need to call this long function. Send tr set translates auto resizing mask constraints. And we're going to set this to false. So what this is stopping is this is stopping our iOS app from doing its own auto resizing mask, which it adds by default to any view. And we're going to set our own auto resizing, auto layout masks. So you can do that. And then we also need to, at the end, set view one to add v2. So now because we want view two to be inside view one, we simply add it with the add subview command. Okay. And remember, we want view two to be green, and we want it to be half the size of view one no matter what the size of view one is. So we're going to do this with constraints. So now what I want to do here is I want to mostly interact with v1 for this. And I want to add constraints to the super view of view two, which is the view one. And view one will now contain all these constraints and, and tell view two how to bend or how to um, outer resize itself corresponding to the size of v1. So I'm going to tell v1 to add a constraint. And this constraint is going to be about v2. But it will be used on v1. That's why I'm calling v1.add constraint. So I make I look up NS layout constraint and I look at the constructors. I select the constructor with all the items. Now I'll try to I'll try to go over all the items. It can be very complicated, but really it's just a relative relationship. So the first thing is the item. So V1, so what is the item I am going to compare here? I'm going to compare the item V2. So I'm comparing the item V2 and what attribute do I want? So I'm comparing view v2 and the attributes I'll show you is an enum and if I look up NS layout attribute I have many I have many options I have the center I have the height I have the left I have the left margin I have the right I have the top and I have the trailing margin I have the width so you really just have top bottom left right and your height and width to really work out and margins just make a specific distance so it looks a little bit more clean like so nothing is directly touching the edges. That's all margin would do. So it'd give you a little bit of spacing. And what we're going to do here is we're going to select the left. So we're going to have the left of the, if you think of the view as a square or a rectangle, it's going to be the left side of that view. And then we're going to do related to, and this is how NS, there's always a layout in front of it, NS relation. And so 
these are the parameters for relation. It can be equal, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So equal means that as you can that the relative layout, the percentage that we basically set will always be exactly what we put it as, or greater than or equal to, meaning if it has a chance to expand to greater than that percentage that we give it, it will expand. Or less than or equal to means if it has a chance to be smaller than what it wants to be, it will it will take that opportunity. But equal means it will always follow our rules. So usually you'll see an equal here. And two item is the item we're again comparing it against. So we're gonna compare it against V1, our super view. And then we have another attribute. So we're gonna compare it to V1 and then the attribute is going to be probably the same attribute that we listed up here. Let me space out these arguments here to make it a little bit easier to read because we're going to be doing this a lot of times, but after this we'll just copy and paste. So we have, we have the first attribute, V2, and we're comparing the left and we're saying, hey, we're going to be equal to that attribute. And then we're going to say, what are we comparing the left of v2 of the view 2 to well we're comparing it to our super view and we're going to compare it are we going to compare it to another we're going to compare it to another attribute we're going to compare it to the left of that super view so now the left side of our super view is compared to the left side of view 2 and so now after we've done that we basically specified how we're comparing both of these and the other way we're going to do that let's see if i don't get any errors from this i don't think i should now we need to experiment how are we going to compare these two. And we do this with the multiplier and the constant. So you can imagine we're going to take, I'm going to take V2 and say, and say, okay, you should be this close to the left of V1. So you should be one time, if the, if the initial distance, let's say, is one, then you should be one times you should be one times one plus the constant away from v the left side of v1 so in this case the multiplier will make it the multiplier will since it's one is kind of the starting point it will be it will be the both left sides will be touching if you give it a multiplier of one and a constant of zero and i'll show you guys at the end if you add constants and multipliers what happens to it and let me just make sure this all runs because i don't think i have an error okay no error and so now what we're going to do here is, if you run it right now, you're not going to see the green square, and I'll get into that later. Because all the constraints are not set yet. So now I'm going to copy this constraint, and now, and now we need to do all this, we need to compare every side. So we did the left, we did the left, and now we're going to do the right side. So now we need to align the right side of view 2 with the right side of view 1. And if you noticed, for the attribute here, I have dot right. You can do this for the attribute and the related by. You can just do dot equal and dot right for all of them. That's Swift short enum syntax. If you know what you're doing, you just do dot and then whatever the enum is, dot right, and it will automatically symbolize it for you, um, you know, map it for you. And you can just do that. So that's all I'm going to do for dot right. And now we're going to do this. I'm going to do this for dot top as well. So dot top, make sure that the upper side, the top side of the rectangle, is configured and again I'm not going to do anything with that and now we're going to get to probably the most important one which is the height and so I've done the left right and top side we don't need to do the bottom because that's going to be when we do the we just need to do the bottom or the top because the height will figure out the opposite one for us so now we're going to do the height and so instead of dot right we can just do dot height and we're going to compare this to the height of v1 Okay, so now if I run it, we're going to notice something here. We're now going to make use of the, of the multiplier. You're going to notice now I have a green square. My green square totally occupies the height width, the height and width of the red square. The red square is still there. It's just that the green square has overtaken it, as I'll show you. And that's because I set the height. I compared V1. This is when NS constraints really clicked for me. I compared V2 to V1. Of I compared the heights in a relationship that said they should be equal. And so I said the height should be equal to their height with a multiplier of 1. So their height should be exactly equal. So if I set their height to be, its height to be point, V2 to be a multiplier of 0.5's height of V1's, then we should get our desired effect. See, we got... A, a green square that is half the height 
of the red square. And that's no matter what. So if I go up here and change the size of this initial rectangle, we'll make it 200 by 300. Hopefully that still fits on the screen. Then still, we did no resizing to that green square, but it's all taken care of for us. The width has changed as well. The width now expands fully across the red square, and the height is still perfectly, it looks a little weird, maybe that's just my glasses. The height is still perfectly half of the super view, the red square. So that's NS Layout's constraints. You kind of think of it as you're comparing the attributes, the sides, left, right, height, or width, to another view that you want. So it doesn't have to be the super view. A lot of times it will work that way. Or you can compare it to another view to make sure maybe maybe there's, there are two text boxes because the text box is really just the UI view just with um, a few constraints like a string for texting, for text. You can add constraints to a text field and another text field to make sure maybe they're the same width on your screen or make sure that they're only a few pixels away from each other. So I encourage you to play a lot around with NS constraints. Playing around with them will make them better and write a few problems. Try to add another square and maybe make this add another square on the bottom left and make a blue square that occupies only one half the height and one half the width. So a rectangle that kind of takes up this part of the screen I'm highlighting right now. Have a great day guys and ask any questions. Um, feel free to subscribe as well.